At a private dinner prior to the anniversary celebration, Pastors Conrad Thompson and Richard Jensen, both former speakers on Lutheran Vespers, took a moment to reflect on the ministry. First, Pastor Conrad Thompson. My granddaughter asked me one day, Grandpa, were you on Noah's Ark? I said, of course not. She said, how come you didn't drown then? <laughs> I go way back in history, and I jotted down a few notes, lest I should stray too far. But uh, Gregerson, as you know, was driving home late one night and tried to get a religious program and couldn't find one. So he had the dream to start one. And uh, thus came Lutheran Vespers on the radio, and one station, WNAX, began broadcasting. All of this was live from the studio. And when I was a pastor at Grace Lutheran in Watertown, South Dakota, we thought, why not originate the broadcast just once in our church, have our own choir sing? So we lined it up. Gregerson came up. Everything was set. And that night, we had a huge thunderstorm, lightning, and all the stations were blacked out except WNAX in uh, Yankton. So he went to tapes after that. Then late in 1951, I was called to be the director of evangelism. And right away, we took an interest in Lutheran Vespers because it was evangelism, outreach. And in 1952, we hired a secretary to work in Sioux Falls, and we paid the salary from evangelism. Then we called Gregerson to our staff in 1952, and he turned it down. So we called him again in 53, and he started work with us then, and continued all that time under evangelism. I state that with some uh, accent, because uh, for some reason or other, Dr. Schutz and other higher-ups <laughs> got the idea that Gregerson came begging for a call to our staff, and that was not the case. We reached out and called him. We also had one of our staff members supervise the budget and so forth and so on until we, and by the way, for the communications department to hear this, our subsidy to them in one year was 85000 plus paying the salary, house allowance. Did you hear that? 85000 <laughs> <laughs> well, as the years went on, we uh, organized a committee, and then we organized a board, and we worked with Lutheran Vespers in that kind of uh, arrangement. The Commission on Evangelism picked up the tab in a lot of things. Then Gregerson, 1954, got a dream to start a chapel in the hills. So then we began to dream about that. He got an architectural firm to give him uh, a design of a log cabin. Well, our committee and board objected or rejected that, and then Dr. Dibbig originated the idea to have a contest among architects in the nation. So uh, we had that contest. Lutheran Brotherhood paid $1,000 in prize money, and Mall and Pulver won out with a Crystal Cathedral design, and they were from California. Well, we had no money. We couldn't build. We didn't have any congregation to draw on. So we finally decided to bow out on that. And uh, then the architectural firm sued us. And we had to spend months and years to get out of that suit. It cost us $12,500 out of the Lutheran Vespers money. And evangelism had to make up some of that. So we went on and... Uh, I proposed the state church design, and nobody wanted that. So that took a long time to sell that idea. Finally, they accepted it, and uh, we built. Then Dr. Schutz called me right in the next room here one time, and he said, I'm nominating you to be the speaker. Maybe he wanted me to get out of evangelism and into... <laughs> anyway, <coughs> I finally... After much protest, I finally thought, well, I'll put in my tape and my name and, and let them play with it. So then I became the speaker. After 12 years, it was my turn to retire at age 65. And I underscore that, too, because in that era, hardly any pastors would retire at age 65. 
They had to wait until 70, 75, or most likely die in the, in the pulpit. But uh, I decided with all the difficulty we had retiring people, I was going to retire at 65. Then Dr. Jensen was chosen, and he and Roll Kingdom asked Swanee and me to roam the country for two years visiting Lutheran Vespers listeners. And what a thrill that was. We met people of every denomination, old and young, doctors, seminary faculty, college professors, secretaries, nurses, every walk of life, and almost every home we went into, there was the Lutheran Vespers benediction on their walls somewhere. We heard their heart cries, we heard their joys, their sorrows and problems, and their deep, deep appreciation for Lutheran Vespers. Swanee and I could share stories for hours and hours about this. So we honor our founder today, Harry R. Gregerson, who had the dream to witness of Christ and the gospel through the radio. His concern for souls was very evident. I used to say about him, he had tears in his voice, had compassion for souls, and millions upon millions heard the message, and many, I'm sure, found their way into the kingdom of God, and now it's continued in greater measure than ever through Walt, and we thank God for his ministry too. I, I better stop because I could go on and on if you understand. <laughs>